You want, you want me to count down? All right. Count us down. Good. Five, yeah. four, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the We Got Us podcast, where we operate from the belief that each young person is an idea away from their lives changing forever. Today, I'm honored to be joined for the first episode of the new year by one of my best friends, Mr. Philip Scrub, active member of Team Canada's men's basketball team, but better known to us locally here in British Columbia as the man who put Defen Baker Elementary School on the map. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm good, Gabe. How are you? Good, man. How's, uh, how's France today? It's good. It's good. It's uh, starting to get a little cold out here, but uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of in the same situation as everywhere else in the world, so just trying to get through every day. Yeah, we're recording this on the 5th. You have a couple more days to kind of hang out and get yourself ready till your first game of the new year, right? Yeah, we play uh, we play a game on Friday and then uh, we got a like a five day five day road trip. So we're just kind of preparing for extra three games right now. Nice, run it up. All right, let's uh, let's start with an easy one. When I show you, for those of you guys who are listening to audio, you're gonna have to go back to the YouTube channel. But when I show you this, what comes to mind? Uh, I think it was it was obviously it's after my last uh, my last year at, at Carleton. We won the the national championship, and yeah. uh, I mean I think after that it was like a sense of relief. Um, just to be be done, we won, and then it was uh, obviously you came uh, to visit, and uh, it was great to see you. And it was just kind of like one of those you just feel like you remember uh, all the times back in uh, elementary school and in high school we spent together, and it was kind of like a long road up until that point. So it's a lot of good, a lot of good memories from that time, and it was good uh, looking back with you. Yeah, man, that's dope. I think, uh, yeah, that was your fifth championship in five consecutive years with the Carlton Ravens. And I think I want to just go back to a point and be like, in for those of us in the working world, you know, like we'll often say like college or like high school, those are the best times of your life because you get to spend a lot of time with your friends. How do you look back on that chapter of your life and like being at Carlton and even playing high school or at, like Playing playing basketball with your with your friends and your classmates essentially versus how do you compare and contrast that to like playing professionally now? Yeah, I mean the main the main difference is I mean back then high school college it was a lot of fun playing it was, it was strictly about how much you you love basketball and and you love playing with your your friends and and your teammates there and now it's 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 a job, you know, it's, it's, it's your, your job you're doing every day. You, you're living in a, a foreign country, you, you meet people, but um, I mean, it's nothing like the, the high school and, and college friends you meet. So yeah. um, it's, it's, I'm not saying I don't in, enjoy basketball now, but it's definitely a, a little more, <clears throat> I guess, in terms of the memories you make, I definitely miss the, the chemistry with with high school teammates and, and college teammates yeah yeah nothing ever nothing ever replaces uh our first shout out to our high school boys here nothing ever replaces that pick and roll with big g you know <laughs> nothing man he was unstoppable oh man yeah people we gave a lot of people problems that year yeah oh but in that sense when when do you think was the do you recall the first time where you were like okay I, I can play at a professional level. When is it, was there a time throughout your life where you felt like you were confident enough to be like, this can be the way that I feed myself? Oh, I, I don't know. Like it, it was, I mean, I knew, I knew the moment that I, I wanted to be really good at basketball. Um, I think I was in grade 11 where I really started taking going to the gym seriously um, and wanting to improve um, and then after that it was kind of just focusing on getting better every day like when I got to Carlton it wasn't like oh I'm, I'm training to become a professional it was more of a focus on how can I improve every day and then once once I did the things I need to do 
the play, the opportunities to play professional kind of came after that. So it was never like I was thinking of that in the back of my mind as I went through high school and college, but it just kind of happened as a result of the the kind of work I put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think you took like back before the days where I think like we graduated like 10, 11 years ago now, which is wild. But like it was before the days where like the AAU circuit was so almost the norm, right? And you just right. you, know, play, you played VC, you did your thing. And but like for you to see for that huge explosion for like those of us who followed you closely post um post VC, like year three or four, you just became a like not saying you weren't a monster before, but like at Carlton, you just became this this guy who like was unstoppable night in and night out and just like going to, like even in the preseason games like having those huge nights against like like Syracuse and all those different schools right so like was that reflecting upon that do you think like was there do you, do you still get nervous when you hoop then uh yeah every every game before the game um I get nervous uh I think Looking looking back at, at Carlton specifically, it was very easy to prepare for games and what people would think are, are big games because uh, Coach Spurn specifically was very tough on me to 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 focus on on the process, you know, um, focus on you playing at a high level and helping your your teammates play at a high level. So there wasn't a lot of room to be be nervous for a game because you're focusing on on so many other things um that's what i mean in the game like before the game like right before the game you always have a little bit of nerves but yeah um i remember just at that time like you feel like you you can handle anything because you you've been through a lot of tough practices and, 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 and tough games and you feel prepared for kind of any situation that, that might come up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What about, let's take it back to uh, that white jersey behind me that's, uh, that I think that was the first time you represented the national team that was during the summer of, help me out here. Ooh, it must have been, uh, with the senior team, it must have been 2015 after my last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when like, when that game, I think, or there was a game where you put on that jersey and you were playing against, like, you were playing against Mark Gasol. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So, like, did you, like, and all those, like, when you play with NBA guys and, like, when you represent the Can the Canadian team, when you play against, like, those guys that we used to, we used to watch those guys on TV, like, was there, were there moments for, like, for a younger basketball player um, listening to this or a younger athlete listening to this? How did you navigate that that first little little moments when you kind of like meet your meet your heroes or you meet the people that uh, you want to aspire to be? Yeah, it's I mean it's it's funny because in the moment you don't really think about it, um, especially for me with, with my whole national team experience. Um, Tommy was there for a lot of it, and Coach Smart uh, Dave was there for a lot of it. So whenever Dave and and Tommy are around, I feel um, a lot of pressure to to play well and to play hard. And, and those are the only things that I'm focused on. Um, and that's kind of helped me as I, as I kind of grew up with the national team, playing with a lot of high level NBA guys uh, against a, a lot of NBA guys. You, you just try to focus on those two things and and in the end, they're they're just basketball players, you know. Everyone, everyone has has weaknesses. Everyone has strengths, and you just try to to kind of show your strengths as, as much as possible. And um, the one thing I've noticed is is a lot of the times you can you can play against everyone, anyone if you're if you're confident and um, and you kind of trust trust the work you put in. So. Um, Maybe after the game, if I if I was talking to you or, or a friend, I'd say it's oh, it's crazy. I've, I've played against these guys before, but uh, before the games, you, you just kind of you just kind of play and, and try to compete. Yeah, 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 for sure. So shifting gears a little bit, you mentioned that when you are playing with Coach Smart and you're playing a lot or in the same environment or on the same team as as your as your brother Tommy, 
you feel that obligation and you just feel fired up and you feel, you feel in the zone. Right. So like, and it's, in this stretch here, you're in the same country as your brother, but you're not playing with him. And obviously Coach Smart is still back here in Canada doing his thing. Do you think this is the toughest stretch of your career thus far professionally because of that? Um, I mean, I think I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the toughest stretch. I think because I had the, that time with, at Carleton with them and, and all the other coaches and, and teammates there. I think I've built the kind of habits up to to self-motivate and and to be able to to do to have that attitude on my own. Um, but again, I think the, the toughest thing is again living living away from home and, and your friends and and trying to kind of to keep in, in contact with anyone, with everyone. But uh, the basketball part now is, um, I mean, it's, it's very easy to, to get motivated for. And, and mm. again, I try to take it seriously because I'm, I'm getting paid, you know, and I, I want to um, kind of live up to what the, the team expects of me. Yeah. Uh, as your boy Kawhi says, board man gets paid, man. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get at least I'm trying to get at least two rebounds a game, but yeah, four it's, it's, it's tough, man. <laughs> the knees are oh, the knees are giving out a little bit. Gotta watch some uh, Russell Westbrook film to see uh, how to best devour the the rebounding status guard. <laughs> for sure, for he's sure. Built, like, I wish I he's averaging a triple double five games into a season this year. He's doing it again. It's incredible. No, it's he's yeah. pretty impressive, man. I, it's, People have a lot to, to say about him, but it, it's very difficult to do what, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like like you mentioned there, you are all of us to, to my favorite song of the past year. That that was, I think, the, the second most played song on my Spotify in the year in the year 2020, like repping my boy here, Jay Beeves. <laughs> but that was the song he released late in the year, Lonely. Right. So he talked okay. about he talked about the the pressures and isolation he felt as a childhood star from like 15 to, I guess, whenever he released Purpose and kind of took that break from music. And I think it resonated with a lot of people, that sense of loneliness that came with the, the pandemic that hit mid-March. But mm -hmm. you aren't, but that's more so perceived loneliness here, at least here in Canada, or for those of us who are lucky enough to live with immediate connections, we're just not allowed to see people, but like we can still, we're still within that vicinity. Yeah. How have you been overseas and being on your own kind of navigated that uh, sense of loneliness, especially during this time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. And, and I think that one of the problems with me is I'm not great at uh, reaching out when I'm, I'm having a, a tough time or, um, or keeping in touch with people. And that's, that's one thing I've really had to work on. And you really have to kind of work to maintain your relationships with, with people. Um, Cause a lot of people are, I mean, I have a lot of free time out here other than practices, um, but other people have jobs and, and they're working and they're very busy. So mm -hmm. for me, I think um, just trying to talk to, to as many people as I can, um, just so I feel like, um, I'm kind of keeping in contact with family and friends and stuff like that. That really helps. And then obviously with um, my girlfriend, Alex, I have to talk to her every day just to kind of have that sense of, um, just that, that sense of togetherness that you kind of miss being on your own. Um, so you definitely, I definitely have to reach out to as many, as many people as possible to kind of feel feel better about just kind of living on my own out here you've gotten much better at responding though i remember i remember first year university when you first went away like uh one of our good friends arjun shout out to arch <laughs> 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 uh, we, we would talk about we would say like yo did, have you heard from p in a while like and like you, you would text us back like once every like four or five days like but now we yeah. you know we, we got we got a reply within the day <laughs> no for sure no it's a problem it's, it's a problem and that's one thing that i really don't like about myself is I'm very like I can get very content just being by myself and and yeah. you kind of get into like a 
a phase where you're just like, oh, like if you don't talk to anyone during the day, like, oh, it's okay, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, but then when you're realizing you, you, you talk to your friends and your family, like, oh, like this really helps. And I feel a lot better after. So that's one thing that I definitely have to, uh, have to work on. Yeah, 100%. I think we all have, uh, inherent flaws and strengths that we, that we work on as humans. And that's what no one, no one's perfect in that sense. But going back to going back to that year, though, and we only have to go to um, the depths in which you would like to, I think nothing could prepare us for the pandemic and the sense of loss that we have, you know, like first starting with like the, the loss of the loss of Kobe Bryant last year on 20, January 26th, we're approaching that anniversary. And then I think like the loss of normalcy shortly after that. And then for you as an athlete and for athletes everywhere like the loss of firstly competition for a bit and then you, even as you resume competition you you lost fans so like, which is a huge part i think like lebron said uh after the the memphis game two nights ago he said like sports is not sports without fans or professional right. sports not, so but um yeah your loss of your loss of your mom in first year mm-hmm. do you think in any way, shape, or form, do you think that prepared you for what many people have described as like the the most difficult year ever this past year? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's kind of hard to look to look back on it as something that helped me. You know, I mean, obviously, it was, it was the worst worst year of my life and uh, something very very difficult for me, um, but. I do, I do think that now I, I, I'm, it's very hard for me to anything to, to shake me, I, I guess. I think I'm definitely more mentally strong um, with things that may happen to me or, or in my life. Um, but again, it, it goes back to, to me during that time. I think I... I definitely distanced myself from from a lot of people and and kind of threw myself into into basketball, which is was the easiest way to kind of distract myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I I think I did that for a long time, and I think maybe my fifth year, like it took four four or five years to be like, whoa, I haven't even like kind of processed what's happened and really took it in. So I kind of just pushed it for the to the side for four or five years um and then that kind of really hit me hard in that moment so um i kind of wish at the time i had i had reached out more and 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 dealt with it uh in the moment um more head on because i think pushing it to the side it really kind of it didn't it didn't it didn't help you know i think kind of not not addressing um something terrible that's happened is, is not a good way to deal with it um so i think uh yeah it it was it was it was hard but in the end you i have so many people that have kind of looked out for me um friends family um after that and um i I feel like i'm very lucky to to have so many people that have really just gone out of their way to to help me when i know like they obviously have their own stuff going on so i'm very thankful for that yeah for sure for sure and as much as we, as much as we joke, or like I was joking with with you earlier here, saying like it took you like four or five days to reply. Like, but as sometimes I just like wanted to reach out and be like, just to know that you're good, you know. It's like that was such a trans. That's such a big year in our lives. Like to be like 18, turning 19, like or like yeah. first away from home, and then for that to happen. You know, I think like you you asked me to help you write like a person personality portfolio, like uh, I think. That either that year or the year after, and then mm-hmm. uh, in the fourth question, I think it like I don't remember what the question specifically was, but I remember answering. I was very impressed by how this person has converted uh, the loss of someone so important to him, and it really intensified his his focus for his craft. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you remember that assignment. Hopefully, we got a good mark. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I remember it. I remember I sent it to you and a few other people. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 
I've had a lot of, and I, I appreciate you specifically because again, you, you kind of stuck with me during that time. Like, even though like, yeah, like I would just like, I'd probably blow, I'd blow you off or blow a lot of people off, but you, you kept trying to reach out and, um, it, it really, really meant a lot. And now I feel like we're, we're kind of closer than ever. And yeah. I feel very comfortable with you specifically because of how much you shared about your, your life, like being more open um, to myself about how I'm feeling, uh, which is again, something I've, I've really kind of struggled with. So yeah, yeah. it's a uh, good friend. They're really, uh, really important to have and, and it uh, can kind of get you through a lot of, a lot of tough times. Yeah, I appreciate that, big dog. Um, but yeah, I don't think everyone gets an opportunity to like access you or like, I think a lot of people don't feel like they have to share, but I think like everyone has different comfort levels, but I truly, truly believe that like being being vulnerable, like allows, and allows the space and the environment for other people to do so as well. And I think like, uh, remember I came to visit you that first year uh, to watch the, the big game at like Scotiabank Theater. Yep. yep. Like, um, like I knew how much it hurt. Like I knew, obviously knew like the extent that it hurt, but like, you know, I, I like you, you left me a Jersey to wear, but I was like, you know, I might as well go like full kit. I'm going to, I'm going to look through like, see if it was like <laughs> short, like practice shorts or anything. But then, like, I looked like, like there was like a drawer and underneath, uh, underneath where you, you kept like, uh, our, our residence bunker. And then like, but I saw that you kept like, uh, a frame photo of, of mom there and, it was just like uh, that hit me hard and I, mean, I can't even imagine what uh um yeah what you were going through that whole year like just doing your thing out there so yeah i mean i was, I was so lucky to have have tommy tommy there with me too um I and mean, we lived together and uh yeah i mean it, it's it's just one of those things you kind of can't prepare for but you uh i was lucky enough to have have my brother there and, and that really helped and, and then you just have to kind of rely on people to help uh, oh. to kind of bring you bring you through that tough time and um, mm -hmm. I had like a great great support staff so yeah how do you um you know with the with the loss of Kobe um those of us in the basketball community and those of us that he inspired even off the basketball court I think there's so much we can do to carry his legacy on like the books, the gear, the shoes, you know, you just got to put something on that you feel like, yeah, the way we're not the Mamba mentality is back. The mojo is back, at least for that time being. For sure. How do you personally um, keep, uh, keep mom's legacy alive? I think um, to me, she was always, I mean, very tough on me to, to, to be a good person and, um, to to never give up and and um, to to try and be as as humble as possible because that's how how she was and I think I try to go into every situation or or practice or game and 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 just try to be to be the best person I can be and and be someone that she would be proud of. Um, I know, like I, I would obviously still still make mistakes, but I think. Um, whenever I, I'm able to, to, to do something, I, a lot of the times I think if she would think I'm, I'm acting the right way or if I'm working as, as hard as I can. So I just try to kind of respect, uh, everything she's done for me and just uh, try to be the, the best person I can be. Yeah. hundred percent, man. I think it's. It's hard, man. Like I think distance and time resolve a lot, but then at the same time, there's certain things that it's like some some days throughout this past year were just felt like the longest like the longest day ever in the longest year. Mm -hmm. ever, you know, there's only so much externally that uh, one can do to be like, all right, like there's still certain days where I'm like, wow, like the the, the person who motivated me the most outside of I was out of my own mom. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't have access to this person anymore. And like to like the things I would give, like I would I would trade that championship that the Lakers just won in the bubble for like one more Kobeism. Like to hear him like speak about like motivation or like what got like the Mamba mentality one more time. But obviously that's not yeah. reality. Yeah, it's hard to I mean 
it's, and, and I remember like you kind of feel like you need you need them to be there to to kind of guide you and and that was what it was like for my mom like um I mean and my dad too but they they would always kind of when I was looking for what's the right thing to do I know mm. they would know you know or at least they would know the attitude you have to have in a certain situation and mm-hmm. um it's difficult but I think I mean with Kobe especially I think people know his his mentality his approach towards everything and that's gonna kind of carry on forever and you always have access to that uh yeah because I mean he he's very open about uh about how uh he kind of took on challenges and everything so that's that's always going to be with you mm-hmm. I want to touch on you said like like mom taught you like to be as humble as possible I think that's the trait that's Hopefully I wrote, I wrote it in that assignment as well, but that's the trait that I most admire about you, period. I mean, like you've accomplished such a wide resume um, when it comes to the sport of basketball, especially during that Carlton period where you're almost like from the outside world, it was like you were untouchable, you know, won the championship every year, player of the year, I think three times or two times? Uh, three, yeah. Yeah, for like, for someone, I kept wondering internally, because, you know, I've known you my whole life, I think we're, since we're eight, nine years old, and you were like the most humble and the most humble and down to earth guy, like never wore like the, never had to wear, I I think it's only like recently that you started getting more into sneakers and we could discuss that, but like always wore just like, like, um, like a non-flashy pair of sneakers, like you didn't need all the accessories, you would just approach basketball as like your craft. And I, I really, really yeah. respect that. And I was, from the outside, I was like, is, will, will this get to him ever? And I'm super proud that all throughout from 2010 to now, it's nothing, nothing much has changed. Just the, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I think like, I mean, I think that's one thing that first my brother and my parents uh, kind of instilled into me, like it was, it was it was awkward kind of if I never like I to be arrogant and and uh, overconfident you know um, and and Tommy's I think even even better than this than I am like yeah. Tommy's accomplished so much and you'll never hear him uh, brag about anything but uh, I mean I think it, it's 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 been like when I've had so much help to get to the the place that I am with uh, my parents my brother teammates um, coaches you, you I, I don't feel like I can I can brag about anything I've done individually like I think mm-hmm. I've had so much given to me by other people that I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would definitely be at the same level or, or a higher level than I am if they if they had the same help, you know? And a lot of people just don't get opportunities to be um, to be helped by, by really, really great people. So um, yeah, yeah. I just try to respect the people that have, have helped me. And um, like, I know I wouldn't be here without them. So mm-hmm. I don't think I have anything to, uh, to be arrogant about, you know, I think I'm just trying to respect them and, and kind of respect the work they put into me to be, to be successful. 100%. Um, in the Bible, there's a quote, um, I think somewhere in the New Testament, I uh, hope I'm quoting this right, I think like, to whom much is given, like more is expected. And mm-hmm. like, I, I take that to heart too, like with you and the basketball space and like me and the podcasting communication and and consulting space, you know, like not everyone, I, I, I acknowledge that's privilege and opportunity as well. Like not everyone gets to, sp- gets to be in a space where they wake up and think about how they impact the world and how can you, how can I carry on Mamba mentality and teach and carry and teach that relentless work ethic and mindset to young people across the world. And, but a lot, like I realized that if, you know, if I woke up and I was like, how am I going to feed myself or, you know, I like, or just growing up with a, with a completely different circumstance where 
like I'm, I'm worried about other things as opposed to like, I think like if the highest form of human service is to inspire others, there's so many other things that needs to be taken care of before I can even get here. And much like you, I think I recognize that for sure. But man, like the first time, like, I think the first time I've seen you show emotion in a basketball game was like, like my favorite play that I've sent you a couple of times, like that dunk against Ryerson. <laughs> like, like, like you just you gave him the you gave him the step after after sixty two pieces you gave him a little roar I was like whoa I've like never seen this like <laughs> yeah I think I uh, probably blacked out for a minute and I feel like I, I I got so tired after like showing that emotion I probably I think I got scored on the next two <laughs> so, so never do it I again. think uh, yeah it definitely was it it definitely it was like a cool a cool moment but uh i mean yeah i i've i had like two dunks in my in my uh in my career so it's, it's pretty cool that that was uh that was documented at least people know i can dunk yeah i could dunk yeah we, we gotta show uh we gotta show the kids one day man we gotta show the kids. <laughs> yeah. well another one like when i was um like another piece of emotion that was showed that was that got me really fired up was um Back at, at the Mad Me Athletic Center, um, for that for that fifth straight championship, I think there was a game. I can't recall which game specifically, but you hit like you hit like a step back and one three that went in, and then you just like turned around and like gave like a like a big fist pump. If you remember that play, yeah, like, like, yeah, I, I almost punched the guy beside me <laughs> in the stand. <laughs> like, it was awesome. <laughs> uh, I remember that game and. Uh, I know, I mean, I wouldn't say, Tommy wanted to win that game a lot uh, based on who we were playing. Yeah. And I, whenever I know Tommy is like fired up and, and wants to win, it's, it's, cause you don't, you don't see, you don't get a lot of, a lot of emotion out of Tommy, but when you <laughs> fired up, you know, you know, you better be, you better be ready to go, you know? So that was, uh, yeah. I guess the result of that. Yeah, that's awesome. So last, last like formal question before we move into our fun lightning round, what really stuck like when there was um, on JJ Reddick's podcast, like I think he hit, in my opinion, has the best uh, podcast out of all the professional players right now. Outside of like all the smoke doesn't count because like those guys, those guys aren't active players right now. <laughs> that, one, that, one, that one's got a lot of culture. But uh, JJ said on his podcast one time that like it stirred a, it stirred a couple of feathers that some people that some folks in the league are more concerned about their fit and what they wear to the arena versus um, versus getting the W or winning. Mm -hmm. And I personally agree with that to an extent, or even like in everyday life, a lot of people are more concerned about like perception versus what versus the work that they put in day to day, like whatever their craft is, not just basketball. So like when you, how do you think we as a society can get more focused on the work and, you know, to, to get, to get more of what's, what's, what you live with, like that, that tunnel vision of like the work is more important than the gram or what, or likes or any of that external validation. Yeah. I mean, I, I think like it's, it's tough, you know, because I think, I mean, I, when I was kind of growing up in, in high school and all this stuff wasn't like Instagram and, and Twitter wasn't around. So I was kind of lucky in that sense. And uh, I grew up around, had lots of friends that um, kind of didn't value being like looking cool or, or trying to act cool. Uh, but I think in terms of, um, valuing the work over kind of how you look and, and stuff like that. I think if you really want to be good, that stuff won't matter to you that much anyway. Um, I think, uh, I mean, it, it's kind of like a, a certain focus you have every day to, to focus on, on the right things and um, the, the other stuff doesn't really, really cre creep in if you're if you're focused on getting better and um and i think that's important and i think it's important to have people around you that have have the same attitude you know um i think uh especially when i went to carlton i think there were so many people there that would only focus on on getting better and um 
I think Carlton was like the least cool team in the <laughs> in the country, you know. And uh, I think and eventually, I think you can you can take pride in that and just kind of getting the job done. You don't need any um, anything extra other than 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 winning the game, and and that's enough to kind of validate yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, like, and back in back in Carlton days, like, what is there to post anyways? Like, oh, I'm 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 wearing a snow jacket for like the I'm, <laughs> I can't I'm, I'm trucking through the snow for the hundredth straight day. Like, congratulations, cool cool post. <laughs> exactly, man. That's why my Instagram uh, game is weak right now. I got no uh, I got no practice like at Carlton. Yeah, 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 yeah. But man, I think like it's so important to to separate that for. I think even the people, people even our age get caught up in that sometimes. But I think like intense is key as well. I think like sometimes compared to, compared to um, to some of our friends and people in our in our age cohort, I think I post like above average than the normal person. I think like intense is key as well. Like you really got to be cognizant and conscious of like what value is me me putting this out there providing to someone else like you'll mm -hmm. seldom see me put up food pics because i'm like everyone well coming from a privileged place most people eat but like am i working to a place or my work or am i working towards something that like how can i make this aspirational inspirational to to someone to also put in that work and hopefully it hopefully that comes through every time that i i post some i'll have to ask for me. sure for sure. I think, I mean, I, the, the thing is too, like people don't have to be robots, you know, they don't have to be boring. Like you, you can post or, or, or do whatever you want as long, I think, as long as it doesn't affect um, your goals or, or your work or um, or doesn't have a negative impact on, on your personal relationships, you know, like I, people can with basketball specifically, people can wear whatever they want. And if they, if they play well, then, then that's fine, you know? And I think as, as long as it doesn't take away from, from what you're time, trying to accomplish, people can are free to do, free to do whatever they want. Yeah, absolutely. I think like not everyone's wired to be like a Kobe Bryant where they're so, that their life is devoted towards the obsession and uh, mastery of their craft. I think like, even like uh, James Harden, like he's gotten a lot of flack recently for for breaking the the COVID rules regulations for going to certain places that he's not supposed to without a mask on, but mm -hmm. he was doing the same stuff the first every year before the, before this year, but it, like he, he's still still one of the top five players in the league consistently. So I think like yeah you're right I think like as long as it doesn't harm other people there there's a balance that you can strike there and I think somewhere between that outlandish place that like James and sometimes Russell comes in with Russell Westbrook, excuse me, Russell Westbrook comes into and like there's somewhere space between here and Kobe and Kawhi. Like, I don't know. Yeah, everyone's got, what, the, what be, but yeah. <laughs> everyone's got their own, yeah, their own things, man. Like everyone's and uh, some people can handle a bunch of extra stuff outside of their work and still come to work and, and do really well. You know, some people really need to, to focus on their work and, not have any uh, outside distractions, so it just depends on uh, the person. Yeah, yeah. as long as and, and if and if it helps you as well, right? I think like like uh, one of your Canadian teammates, uh, Shai, Shai, how do I say his name? Shay, right? Yeah. Like um, he's regularly featured on Bleacher Reports, like Fit Fit Report. Like he has some of the, the craziest outfits in, in the league when it, when he enters the tunnel, but like he consistently has gotten much, much better every single year and every single game. And yeah, I hate on that because man's getting yeah, it. For sure. And, and people definitely need to, uh, I mean, most people kind of, uh, need a disconnect from uh, from their job, you know, and it helps to kind of have a, a passion in something else. So when you come to work, then you, you're excited to, to be at work. And I think, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. What's your passion outside of work right now? Oof, I don't know. Watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you. Phil texted me um, a couple of weeks ago saying he was working his way through the top 100 movies of all time. How many? How many are you at? How many have you completed? I'm, uh, I'm almost at 50, so I've got a little over 50 to go, and uh, 
It's fine, man. There's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of old movies that I haven't seen that are that are really good. And, uh, I wouldn't say it's my passion, but it's it's definitely something that I, I'm interested in. And I think, uh, yeah, I think you, you just have to find something that you, you kind of can get invested in. Uh, for me, outside of basketball, and it changes a lot for me because I have a lot of free time to do a lot of different things. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's really that's that's good. I mean. Um, I think you and I have always connected, like there's very few people who go like into the depth that we go to into when we talk about like movies or get as excited when we talk about like movies and music specifically. Like yeah. one, of my, one of my highlights is always making that like uh, our greatest of all time uh, music playlist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, so. we got to... Uh... We got to do that uh, at least two, three times. It changes a lot for me because I'm listening to a lot of different stuff. And it's, uh, I think it's good. It's good to always go back and we can compare. And uh, I know you got a lot of beaver on yours, which is. Uh, That's my guy right now. <laughs> right now man. Which is fine. It's good. Yeah. That's some good songs. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. His, his return is just so huge for the culture, man. Like a lot of people. Like a lot of people don't make it back from that dark place. And, you know, if you like listen to some of those songs on purpose, like he was in a place where some people might not get out of. And I'm glad that he took his time and I'm glad that he found much like with uh, your mom's situation. I think I'm glad that he found the support system that he needed to really get back to a place where he can perform and write and sing at a high level. And Mm -hmm. just be uh, he gets a lot of hate too right in the same way that like james harden does he's almost like the james harden of of music in a way and like mm -hmm. as long as you're still like he's still doing his job at an elite level but like you, can you externalize all those other things and i think he has he out of a lot of out of most people he's got a lot of interest outside of his job for sure for sure, <laughs> <laughs> for sure that was good. Think politely. <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, man. Uh, moving into the lightning round, we got two for okay. you. Okay. What has been an idea that has impacted your behavior or shifted or, or changed your mind about life the most? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, Dave Smart in college. I think he made me focus more on making my teammates better and caring about my my teammates success mm. um and i found when i did that immediately you become less focused on on distractions you know specifically in the game like you maybe you won't care if if, if you if you miss five shots in a row you're not focused on your um on you, you're not dwelling on your mistakes. You're focused on the team's success, and I think it's it, it turns out it's very hard not to play well when you're only focusing on on the team winning. You know, um, and I think that I've taken that into my personal life too. When you're you you're trying to when you're thinking about someone else and you care about someone else, a lot of times you you forget about maybe this little thing that's bothering you or, or your own problems. And if you think about someone else, the, the things that seem tough on you don't seem so bad anymore because you can focus on how someone else feels. So, um, and that, that's definitely the biggest thing for me is, um, cause a lot of the time I think I, I grew up and I, you know, you, you, I only cared about how I played, you know, if yeah. I play well and, and, and the team lost then, uh, Okay, like I yeah. side played well, but then you, you, that's really, really not a good attitude to have. And um, I think eventually, once I started caring about other people more, then I, I started to get better as a player too. Mm. Although that was still subconsciously a thing for you, um, one of my my favorite play in grade eight was when uh, we're on the um, we're on the same shift together. I got during our grade eight year at Vancouver College, we would be played in, in shifts up, up until the fourth quarter. Then coach puts out uh, the best five for that game. And Phil and I were on the same shift pretty often. And I think one of the, I came off a, a stellar <laughs> elementary school career. So I, I still thought I was the man at the next level. 
But uh, was not the case. Was not the case, unfortunately. So there was a couple times where like Phil would go off, and I'd be like, "All right, cool. Like, you know, I, I can I can play this role." And I think I asked you once, like, "I, I need the rock more." <laughs> And then on a fast break one time, you gave me the ball, and I, like, I finished the layup. And then, like, as we walked past, and, and, and um, and I, as we walked past, sorry, back to the bench, and we weren't, uh, we weren't as close as we are now. I think that was, I think that was one of the first words you said to me that that, that entire season. You were like, "Good shift," and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> nice." Uh, a, I'm sure I was very pleasant to be around back then. I was so quiet in in grade eight specifically. Yeah, like coming to a new new school and uh, yeah, basketball really had like all my. You needed to give me the ball more than you would have spoke more. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, it would have won by I'm one. Sure. <laughs> I know we didn't even make uh, provincials that year, man. We didn't yeah. Even... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running the wrong plays, man. Running the wrong plays. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go back <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, I love that. I think like that idea that you encapsulated is like the whole concept of my brand and my, and my business like that, we got us piece, like society grows great, greater through collaboration. And how can we most put uh, other people and other people's needs and wants, at least bring them into your awareness and think about what other people are also thinking. Like it doesn't have to consume your life. And it, and at certain points you do have to put your own needs in front of them because you need to also survive and thrive as a person yourself. But I think, and if you can shift that and just to think about, what other people are feeling around you, then you just become a uh, much more, I think universally a much more comfortable person to be around in every room okay. that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, onto the, onto the final subject of um, my favorites, my favorite little segment here is um, Teen Tip Tuesday. Nice. Actually it was inspired by, um, did you ever have Mr. Anstey? No, I didn't, no. Oh man, solid teacher. So in study skills, he um, he always. They, I think one time he asked us, "What would you? What advice would you give to a younger version of yourself?" And um, shout out to Mr. Anski if he's listening to this. Um, but uh, that always stuck with me. So yeah, if you're speaking with grade eight Phil instead of me, what would you say to him? What, would you, what encouragement would you provide that person? I'd say. I mean, I think. I tell my younger self to to not be so scared of of doing things outside your comfort zone. Um, I think, uh, especially, I mean, early on in in high school, I was obviously very quiet, and um, I think with with kind of carried into basketball too. I've I've had a tough time. Uh, at Carleton being in a leadership role and being vocal. Um, and I think uh, that's the one thing Dave, Dave Smart really kind of hammered into me. You have to, you have to start trying to be comfortable being uncomfortable, you know? And uh, I think every time I, I did something outside my comfort zone that I really didn't want to do, um, I felt better after and I felt like I'd actually accomplished something. Um, mm. And I, I think I tell myself not to be worried about making mistakes, um, not to be worried about looking looking stupid or or saying the wrong thing. You, you just have to try things and, and and do your best, and I think uh, you'll be better for it. So I I think I wish I would have taken a few more a few more uh, risks growing up, just in terms of trying new things and uh, um, with basketball, like being more vocal and. Um, yeah, 100%. That's a, that's a great, that's a very sage piece of advice. And I think um, in the words of Kobe Bryant, when he said to, uh, when he was asked about when I think Deron Williams went 0 of 9 one time when he was in Brooklyn, Kobe said, uh, I would never go 0 of 9 because that would mean I lost my confidence. I would rather go 0 of 30. <laughs> He's got to keep, sure. keep shooting the ball. Keep shooting the ball in real sure. life as well as, um, as well as on the floor. As eventually, if you put, if you've put all the work in, shots got to drop, you know? For sure, I think it, it's true. If if, you, if you're a good shooter and you're 0 for five, and you shoot the rest of your shots with the confidence that you that you would normally have, then like you're gonna make you're gonna make shots, you know. Um, and you just have to uh, kind of tell that voice in the back of your head telling you not to shoot or uh, not to do not to be aggressive to 
to kind of to to get out of here. You know, you just have to you have to you have to kind of block that out and and keep playing uh, the way you can play because um, like the potential is obviously in you. You you know you can do it, but yep. it's just sometimes that voice in your head that's stopping you. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that would be if I were to add on to your Teen Tip Tuesday, I think it might, that would be the the secondary. Um, tier to that is also like make friends with yourself a lot of people I don't think we're often taught to like the self-compassion the self-forgiveness and the self-love piece um, mm-hmm. especially going to like love my experience at Vancouver College but I, I like in an all boys environment for very important years of our life like we were, it was just a lot of indirect and direct competition with the people around us and versus other schools and mm-hmm. yeah, the ability to really like slow down and be like, hey, if I made a mistake, that, that's it's all good because there's always the next game or the next class, the next essay, whatever, right? Like I, I could sit here and like um and be super, super upset about the fact that someone uh someone I'm speaking to stole my English 12 award, but at the same time I for, I've forgiven myself. I've forgiven the I've forgiven the the selection panel as well as as well as myself for that because you know. I wasn't, I wasn't going to bring it up, but yes, I was awarded the, the best English student uh, of, grade, of our grade 12 class. So that's, uh... <laughs> no, man, that's, 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 that's one I'm never going to let you forget about. I can't, I couldn't believe it. Like I, I can't get that back. You weren't even there. You were, you were, uh, you were playing hoop somewhere that day when you received the award. Uh, Coach Scrub went to went to receive the award on your behalf. Like I couldn't even like give you like the the, the Kobe stare from the front row right? <laughs> when you as you walked out, man. I just you gave me so much pain. <laughs> oh man, that's the, that's one of the best awards I've ever won, man. Yeah, yeah, that, that's one. Hope, that's one you can uh, be uh, not as humble about because uh, you stole it from. The- <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, I hope my dad still has that somewhere. Oh my like, gosh, I, I might have to uh, sneak into his place and uh, and kidnap it. <laughs> cool, cool man um anything else you wanted you wanted to uh, say to the audience or or promote or just talk about before uh, that we didn't get a chance to cover no i mean i think uh one thing i just i think i, I kind of touched on it before like i appreciate um you as a friend and and this kind of platform you have they're using it to, to help people and um it's definitely Help me. I, I've, I've watched a lot of the podcasts and a lot of the things you post. And um, again, it, it's kind of inspired me to be a little more open uh, about my feelings and and with other people. And I think that's great. Um, yeah, but I, it's been it's been fun. I know we wanted to do the the first one in person, but uh, we'll have to have uh, the uh, round two when I'm back in uh, back in Vancouver. For sure, man. As uh, as we used to say in basketball, or I think they still say this, uh, run it back, right? But yeah, um, yeah like I want to uh, reciprocate that marriage of appreciate appreciation as well. Like you spoke on how quiet you were in at the beginning of our friendship, and for for us to come full circle um, to a place where you are, we're speaking here for like I don't know, for the forty five minute mark. I think that was a uh, um, it's, it means a lot to me that uh, that you're willing to share your story and go into the the depths that you did, especially with um, especially with what happened uh, 10, 11 years ago. And you know, I'm still here to support you in any way, uh, directly and indirectly. And anyone who's listening to this, you know, like if I have that impact through the podcast and through the post and through just in person as well, be dope in real life as well. I think mm-hmm. um, and don't be afraid to tell people how like. If, if this, if anyone takes anything from these these last couple of minutes, like don't don't be afraid to tell people how you feel and if you appreciate them, because you just don't know when the last time that you knock wood, you get to see someone. When the chance to do so is so. For sure, yeah, that's good advice. Man. I think uh, yeah, a lot. Of, we still got a lot of uh, good memories to make. It's uh, but we've done. Uh, I think we've been through a lot of each of us and. Uh, all of it's kind of led to to really good, uh, really good friendships. So I'm I'm definitely thankful for that. Yeah, likewise, brother. All right, uh, this will thank you very much for your time, Mr. Philip, and uh, we will catch you on the flippity flip. All right, man. Sounds good.